File 1. Listening 1. So, the painting we're looking at now is called Nighthawks by the American artist Edward Hopper, who was born in 1882. Hopper finished the painting in 1942. Nighthawks came to Chicago a short time after that. As you can see, the painting is a scene in an American cafe late at night. There are three customers. They're sitting at the bar. The customers look like strangers. They aren't looking at each other and they aren't talking. There's also a barman. He's busy behind the bar and he isn't talking to his customers either. It's quite a lonely scene. The New York street outside the cafe is very dark. It's very bright inside the cafe, but it doesn't look warm and friendly in there at all. The word nighthawk, like night owl, describes a person who stays up late. So the three people at the bar are like nighthawks. The two men are wearing dark suits and hats. One of the men is smoking. He's sitting next to a woman. She's wearing a red dress with short sleeves. She has lovely long red hair. She looks pretty, but she isn't smiling. As you can see, the barman is wearing a white jacket and a white hat. He's looking outside. Maybe he wants to go home. File 1. Listening to 1. How often do you come and watch a film here? Every Saturday night. Really? That's a lot. Well, I hope this film's good. Yes. Oh, everyone's going in now. Let's go in and find our seats. 2. What are you looking for? A skirt and a jacket. I need some new clothes for work. Do you like this jacket? Yes. Oh, look. I love that blue dress. Let's try them on quickly. The shop's closing in ten minutes. Three. So, what's your new girlfriend like? Well, she's shy. Until you get to know her. She's very hard-working, too. She's just like you, then. Oh, sorry. This is my station. I have to get off here. Oh, OK. See you on the train tomorrow morning. Bye. Four. Where did you study English before? At a school in Barcelona. My teacher was really nice, and I learned a lot. Do you like our teacher here? Yes, he's really fun. Let's do this speaking exercise now. Yes, OK. Five. What does your boyfriend look like? Uh, he's quite tall and thin. He has lovely blue eyes. Short blonde hair. Mm. He sounds nice. Oh, here's my boss. I'm going to my desk. See you later. OK, I have a meeting now anyway. File 2. Listening 1. Last winter, my boyfriend and I went on holiday to Kenya for two weeks. We rented a beach hut on a beautiful white sandy beach for the first week. And the second week, we decided to go on safari. We planned a perfect holiday, but it didn't begin well. On the first day, we arrived at the beach hut. There were lots of young people in the other beach huts. Some of them invited us to a party on the first night. Soon after we got there, my boyfriend started flirting with one of the girls at the party. He didn't dance with me, but spent the evening talking to the girl. The atmosphere was romantic and magical, but not for me. I was angry. 
We argued about everything after that. Although we weren't getting on well, I still wanted to go on the safari. When we got on the bus, I saw the girl from the party. That was the end. We were camping and we all ate together every night. It was terrible. I felt so sad and lonely, and my boyfriend looked so happy with the other girl. We broke up when we got back to London. My boyfriend went to Manchester with his new girlfriend. I took lots of photos on holiday, but I can't look at them now. I'd love to go back to Kenya one day, but next time I'm going on my own. File two, listening two. One. When I was fourteen, I went to Italy with my class at school. It was in winter, and we went skiing. We also went sightseeing in Trento. In this photo, we're standing in the centre of the town. We were all holding hands and smiling. Two. And in this one, I was fifteen. My parents took my sisters and me on holiday to Spain. We went by plane, and then we hired a car and drove to the village where we were staying. It was a fantastic holiday. We went swimming in the sea every day, and the weather was perfect. Three. This is a photo of me in Australia when I was twenty-four. I was working in a cafe in Sydney at that time. And I was living with two English girls in a flat. We spent all our free time at the beach, surfing and swimming, and had a wonderful time. Four. And look at this photo. My brother's laughing. He was happy because he was going abroad to work, and I was crying because he was leaving. I was twenty-five then. Five. This was last summer, when I was twenty-eight. I went shopping in Paris with my best friend. We stayed at a luxurious hotel, ate delicious food at expensive restaurants, and didn't want to come home. File three, listening one. Excuse me. Good morning. I'm from Smart Travel Magazine. Can I ask you a few questions? Uh, yes, that's fine. Where are you from? I'm from the U.S., New York, actually. And what are your plans in the U.K.? Well, I'm on business. I'm a clothes designer. I come to the U.K. twice a year for London Fashion Week. And is that happening this week? Yes, it is. I'm meeting some people this afternoon, and I've got a photo shoot tonight. And you're going to be busy. Yes, I am, but I'm going to have fun too. And how long are you staying in London? Well, I'm in London for a week, then I'm going to fly to Ireland for a week's holiday. That sounds nice. What are you going to do there? I'm going to visit my grandmother. She's ninety-five years old. Oh, lovely! Enjoy your stay. <laughs> Thank you. File three, listening two. One. What time are you going to the airport? Well, my flight's at ten thirty, so I'm leaving home at six. And how are you getting there? By taxi. My company pays for it. Two. I'm going to be really busy next week. Oh, why's that? I'm going to a conference in Turkey. Oh, that sounds exotic. What kind of conference? It's a conference for NGOs. Three. What are you going to do after university, John? I'm going to teach English in China. Oh, that's amazing! I'd love to go to China. Well, come and visit me next year. Four. What are we going to do today? I'd like to go cycling in the forest. 
Do you want to come? Uh, yes, that'll be fun, but I've got no sense of direction. Oh, don't worry about it. I've got my smartphone with me. Five. Have you got any plans for the weekend? Yes, it's my partner's birthday. I'm staying at home and cooking dinner for her. What are you making? Oh, something easy. Pasta, I think. File four. Listening one. Hi, Jack. I'm home. Did you have a good day at college? Not bad. Mum, there's nothing in the house to eat. I'm really hungry. I've just been to the shops, Jack. Dinner is in half an hour. By the way, have you tidied your room yet? Mum, I've been at college all day, and now I've got a lot of homework. I picked up my dirty clothes, though. Okay, thanks, Jack. Maybe you can tidy your room later. Um, can you lay the table for dinner now? And when you finish doing that, can you take out the rubbish for me? All right, all right. I'm going. Jack, don't look so bored, please. There's a lot of housework to do, and I can't do it all. I realise that, Mum. I've got a lot of homework to finish. That's all.、Hmm. And I've got a lot of other things to do as well, Jack. Sorry, Mum. I know. Okay, let's just do the boring things, and then we can sit down and have a nice dinner. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. File four. Listening two. One. Mark. Have you ever been to a fancy dress party? I have actually. I went to one last Saturday night. Oh, so did you wear anything fun? <laughs> I went as Mickey Mouse. Nobody knew it was me. Two. Have you done your homework yet, Izzy? Yeah, I've already done it, Dad. Okay, that's good. What was it today? I wrote something about celebrities and fashion. It was quite interesting. Three. Have you ever bought something you've never worn? Yes, I have. I bought some beautiful designer boots last year. The problem was they didn't really fit. I just wanted to buy them because they were fantastic boots. <laughs> They're still under my bed. Oh, Alice! <laughs> Please don't tell anyone. Four. I'm looking for an interesting book to read. Have you read anything interesting recently? Well, I've just finished *The Shadow of the Wind* by Carlos Ruiz Zafón. I really enjoyed it. Have you read it? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a really good story. In fact, when I started reading it, I couldn't stop. Five. Tina, have you ever been shopping in a foreign city? Yes, I have. I went to Berlin last summer. I went shopping on the Kudam. It's like Oxford Street in London. Were the shops good? Oh yes, the Kudam has really good shops, and I love shopping somewhere new. File five, listening one. What's the most beautiful city you've ever been to? The most beautiful.、Mm. That's difficult to answer. I've been to a lot of beautiful places. Let me see. My favourites are probably Havana in Cuba and Edinburgh in Scotland. Oh, really? Can you tell me about them? Well, both Edinburgh and Havana have got really interesting architecture. But for me, Edinburgh's architecture is more interesting. I studied architecture there, you see, so I prefer it.、Mm. Edinburgh also has a lot of beautiful modern buildings, many more than in Havana, and Edinburgh on a sunny winter's day is probably the most romantic city I've ever been to. I met my girlfriend in Edinburgh, so I think it's more romantic than Havana. Oh, <laughs> the nightlife in Edinburgh is good, but the nightlife in Havana is better. The music is fantastic, and the bars are open very late. The people in Havana are the friendliest I've ever met. They like to have fun and go out. <laughs> I think the people in Edinburgh are a bit less friendly, or maybe just quieter. File five, 
Listening to. One. Today we're doing a survey about what people think of their town. Hello, Jim. What do you think of your town? Well, when I first came here in 1990, it was very safe, but now I feel anxious. There are just too many frustrated young people in the town. I think it's too dangerous now, especially for older people. Oh, that's not good, Jim. Thanks for your call. Two. Next, we have Sandra. Hi, Sandra. What do you think of your town? It's a beautiful town with a castle, an old church, and traditional shops. I know culture is important, but for me, it isn't interesting. I think tourists enjoy these things more, so it's interesting for them, but too boring for me. Oh, I see. What about that lovely market I've heard about? The market? Oh, that's for tourists too. It's so boring. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Three. Now we have Dave. What's your town like, Dave? Well, there are old buildings everywhere. I'd prefer to live in a big modern city. I'm eighteen, and this town just isn't modern enough for me. And the people here don't change either. They're as traditional as their parents. Uh huh. Okay. Thanks for calling, Dave. Four. Hello, Jess. What do you think of your town? Well, it's quite small. I think it has a population of about three hundred and fifty, and it's famous for nothing. It's a really quiet place, actually. Most people like living somewhere quiet, but this town isn't noisy enough for me. I'd like to live in a town where there's nightlife or a shopping centre. You know, somewhere noisy to go. I see. Okay, Jess. Thank you for your call. Five. And now it's Simon. Do you like your town, Simon? No, I'm sorry to say I don't. Oh, why is that? Well, getting to work is a nightmare. On the roads in the morning, the average speed is about twenty kilometers per hour. It's just too crowded. There aren't enough buses for all the people who are going to work. We have to use our cars, so we all spend more time sitting in traffic than driving. Yes, I understand, Simon. Well, thank you, and that's all we have time for today. File six, listening one. Hi, Anne. Sally, guess what? Robbie and I have just got engaged. Oh, that's wonderful. When did he ask you? Last night, but it's a secret. We haven't told our families yet. Okay, I won't tell anyone. I promise. Thanks. He's buying me a ring this afternoon. Then we're going out for a romantic dinner. When are you getting married? We'll wait until next summer. We'll probably go abroad. Actually, it'll be cheaper. Yes, I suppose so. But if you're going abroad, will I? How much will? Oh, Sally, I'll pay for your ticket. You're definitely coming with us. Oh, Anne, thank you. I don't want to miss it. I'll pay you back by Christmas. It's okay. Don't worry about that. Um, Sally, we'll probably move to London after we get married. And listen, we'll always be friends here or London. It doesn't matter. I know we will, Sally. Thanks. Look, I have to go now. I'll text you later. Okay, Anne. Bye. File six, listening two. One. I felt really anxious when I woke up this morning. In my dream, I was playing tennis, but I couldn't move my legs, so I couldn't hit the ball back. I've got a match this afternoon. I think my dream means I'm going to lose the match. Oh, I hope not. I'm not feeling very positive about it at all. Two. 
I had an amazing dream last night. I play the piano, you see, and in my dream I was recording a blues album with all these talented musicians. I think it means I'll be a famous musician one day. Well, <laughs> I doubt it, but it's nice to dream. Three. I had an interesting dream last week. I haven't got a boyfriend, but in the dream, I was going out with a lovely guy who bought me flowers. We could hear violin music and everything was perfect. I've never had this kind of dream before. I definitely think it means I'm going to meet someone and fall in love. <laughs> I really hope so. Four. My dreams are usually quite nice, but the one I had last night was horrible. I was driving all night and it was freezing cold outside. I was really frightened because I couldn't stop the car. I've got my driving test next week. I think my dream means I'll probably fail it. Five. I've got a good job and I work hard, but in a dream last week... I lost my job, so I had no money to pay for food and everything. I was going up to complete strangers in the street and asking them for money. I felt afraid when I woke up. I think my dream means I'm going to be poor. I'll make sure that won't happen. File 7. Listening 1. Welcome to Tips for Today. In the studio today, we have Mr. Robert Wilkinson, who has been a language teacher for 25 years. He's going to give us some advice on learning a language successfully. So, Mr. Wilkinson, if I'm a complete beginner, where do I start? Well, you probably need to do a course. For example, one evening a week. That will help you to start learning immediately. And you'll also meet other people who are motivated to learn. That's good advice, because it can be quite difficult to stay motivated on your own. That's right. Now, what advice would you give to our listeners who can speak a little but need to improve? To improve your speaking, you really need to practice. Is it possible for you to find someone to practice with? If not, try reading out loud. That can really help your pronunciation, too. You mustn't be shy or nervous. Just do it. <laughs> OK. And what about listening? I think this is the most difficult thing to improve. If you're learning a language abroad, it's definitely easier because you hear people talking all the time. In your own country, make sure you download podcasts or songs or news onto your phone. You can listen to these when you're going to work or college. Mm, nice idea. And finally today, what about reading? Well, you don't have to spend a lot of money on foreign newspapers or books. There's a huge variety of things to read on the internet, such as news websites and blogs. On Facebook and Twitter, you can practice not only your reading, but also your writing skills. That's a good tip. Thank you, Mr Wilkinson. Well, that's all we have time for on Tips for Today. File 7. Listening to 1. Well, I've got quite a stressful job, so as soon as I get home in the evening, I put on my favourite music. That's a great way to relax. I like listening to classical music best, Mozart or Chopin. When I relax, I'm happy. 2. I think it's important to work hard. I've always worked incredibly hard, and I think that's why I'm successful at my job. Being successful makes me happy. I don't mind spending time with my family, but I prefer being at work. 3. What makes me happy? Oh, I've always really wanted to have a big family, so spending time playing with my children is what I like best. <laughs> it's magical. I'd like to get a job in the future, but for now, I like being with the children. 4. 
I'm not very good at cooking, and we never have a lot of food in the fridge. So when I cook something absolutely delicious from nothing, that makes me happy. Five. Happiness for me is singing. Being able to sing the high notes is very difficult. You have to practice a lot and breathe correctly. I sing in a band, and I just love it. File eight, listening one. Hi, Pete. Are you okay? Hi, Diana. Um, can I talk to you about something? Sure. What's the problem? It's about Maria. You know we've been together for two months now, and you know I, well, I'm deeply in love with her. Yes. Well, I did something bad last night. Oh no, Pete! What did you do? I danced with her best friend, maybe for a bit too long, quite a long time actually. Maria wasn't very happy. Not a good idea, Pete. Okay, some advice, please. You should speak to her, Pete. If you say nothing, it'll make things worse than they are already. I know. Talking about it is more difficult than you think, though. Well. Why don't you send her an email? Tell her you're sorry and that you promise you won't do it again. She won't read an email from me at the moment. I'm sure of that. Right then. I think you should leave the office early. She gets the early bus, so you'll see her at the bus station. Then you can speak to her. Tell her that you love her. She'll definitely change her mind. Girls love that kind of talk. You don't know, Maria. If I tell her I love her too soon, she'll get frightened and leave me. Okay then, book a nice restaurant. Persuade her to go out for dinner with you. If you do that, I'm sure everything will be all right. Oh, I guess you're right. I'll leave work early and try to find her at the bus station. Good. And Pete, smile, be happy, make her laugh. She'll love that too. Yeah. Okay, Diana. File eight, listening two. One. I lent my friend some money last week, and she hasn't given it back yet. It was quite a lot of money, so I can't forget about it. In fact, if I don't get the money back, I can't pay for my English classes this week. That's a problem because I have a test on Friday. What do you think I should do? Two. I've got a problem. My boss wants me to go on a business conference this weekend, but it's my daughter's birthday party. She's going to be five years old. All her school friends are coming to the party. My boss is a bit difficult to get on with. I don't want to risk having an argument with him. Should I go to the conference or to the party? Three. I want to trust my boyfriend. But I think he is seeing someone else. He gets texts from another girl. I took his phone and I read the texts yesterday when he was playing football. Maybe she's just a friend, but I don't think he's being honest with me. What should I do? Four. We've had a good year at work, so I've booked a restaurant for all my colleagues to celebrate. I'm meeting them there in fifteen minutes. But I've just heard on the radio that there's a flood in the city centre. Last year there was a flood, and it was terrible. What do you think I should do? Five. I can't seem to get to sleep at nights. I have a lot of work to do, but I don't think I'm stressed. After dinner, I make some coffee and watch TV. That's quite relaxing. But when I go to bed, I just can't sleep. I get Hyperactive. In the morning, I'm really tired. What should I do? File nine. Listening one. On the program today, we're talking about phobias. My first guest is Kerry, who is on the line now. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning. Now, Kerry, you have a fear of open or public spaces. That's right. Yes. So, how long have you suffered from agoraphobia? 
Well, since I was a child, really. I've suffered this fear for about 20 years. Do you know what caused it? No, I don't know what caused it, actually. I've always been scared of going to places where there are a lot of people. For example, I try not to go into shopping centres or buses or aeroplanes or anywhere where there are crowds of people. I just start to sweat and feel panic when I go into these places. OK, Kerry. How does your phobia affect your life? Not surprisingly, it has a severe effect on everything I do. I'm frightened of being alone and I only feel safe at home, so I can't go out to work. And I need to be with someone if I leave the house. I understand. But you have recently completed a course in graphic design. Is that correct? How did you do that? Yes, that's right. I've been a graphic designer for six months now. I studied the course online and I do all my work from home. I don't have to leave the house at all, so it's the perfect job for me. Well, that's great news. One last question, Kerry. Have you had any treatment for your agoraphobia? Well, I have therapy once a week to help me overcome my phobia. And I'm now taking a new drug every day. I hope this drug will be more effective than the last one. OK. Good luck with everything, Kerry. And thanks for talking to us this morning. Now, our next guest is James. and he. File 9. Listening 2. 1. How long have you been a musician, Jeff? Since I was 15 years old. My mum bought me my first guitar for my 15th birthday. We formed the band in 1995 when I was 20, and we've played together since then. Do you think you'll be famous one day? If we were successful, I'd be really happy. But I don't know. We'll see. 2. I see you're at university in Bristol now, Hannah. How long have you been there? For four years. This year is my last year there. And then I'm starting work as a dentist. Isn't your dad a dentist too? Yes, I'm following in his footsteps. 3. How long have you been afraid of spiders, Nick? I've been terrified of them since I was five years old, 15 years ago. Well, what happened? I woke up with a huge spider on my face. It was horrible. Four. Holly, have you been married long? Yes, we've been married for ten years. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I don't tell many people. We're getting divorced next year. Oh, I see. Five. How long have you been injured? Since last Friday. I injured my foot in the match. When will you be able to play again? I'm not sure. Maybe next Saturday? File 10. Listening 1. Did you enjoy your school days, Finn? Oh, yes and no. I went to a same-sex school, so there were no girls. That was a bad thing. <laughs> but I used to get good marks in my reports every year. Did you? I imagined that. What about you? You never talk about school. Oh, I absolutely hated it. That's why. The other children gave me a nickname, Cry Baby, because I used to cry a lot at school. I used to be quite unhappy there. I think I was just really emotional. Oh, that's awful. Yes, I know. But I was clever, and I was good at most of my subjects. What subjects did you take? English, French, art and history. I didn't do any science subjects. Oh, really? I did all of them. Oh. But my favourite was biology. I used to love cutting up insects and sheep's eyes. Ooh, stop it. <laughs> Did you used to behave well at school? Me? Um, well, I think I used to be late for school quite a lot. <laughs> we used to walk there and stop to throw stones in the river on the way, especially in the summertime. That made us late. <laughs> what else did you do that was bad? Well, we had to wear a uniform, but I used to forget my tie all the time. And I remember I was always losing my chemistry books. The teacher used to get really angry with me. But 
I think I behaved well most of the time. Uh huh. I think I'll have to ask your mum next time I see her. <laughs> File ten, listening two. One. What are we going to do this evening, Paul? What about the cinema? But if we go to the cinema, we might not have time to go out for dinner. It'll be too late then. We could try that new Indian restaurant in town.、Mm, I'm not sure. I heard it wasn't very good. Let's just get a DVD and a pizza. Yeah, that's fine with me. Two. I might buy a new dishwasher at the weekend. Why? The one in the kitchen is working perfectly. Well, I know, but I saw this new one in a magazine. It's so much better than ours. Ah,、oh, there are just so many options these days. Let's keep the one we've got. Oh, okay. I'd like a new washing machine, though. Three. We've been in this shop for hours. You're so indecisive. Well, it isn't me. It's the shop. I want some nice food for my dinner party, but there's too much choice. There are hundreds of products here. I'm just getting stressed. Okay. Well, how about we go for a coffee and make a list? Oh, I might not have the party now. Oh, I don't know. Let's have a coffee. Four. I can't decide which new game to buy. You've already got about fifty of them, and you never stop gaming. I know, but I might like this one here, or look at this one. Oh, switch your laptop off! If you don't buy anything, you won't know what you're missing. You're right. Okay. Five. You see, teenagers these days. Why are they all so dissatisfied with life? I think they have too many choices. You know, too many decisions to make. Yes. When I was young, there were fewer opportunities, but it was also simpler. That's true. I think they're confused. Life's too complicated now. File eleven. Listening one. Hello. Excuse me. Can I just ask you a couple of questions? Sorry, I can't. I'm picking up the children from school in five minutes.、Uh, no problem, madam.、Uh, sir, excuse me. Have you got time to answer one or two questions? We're doing a survey. Yes. Okay. So, are you a morning person, sir? I think so. I always wake up at six, and I never set my alarm. I just get up and feel awake. And what's the first thing you do after you wake up? Well, I'm a professional footballer, so the first thing I do is put on a t-shirt and shorts and go running. And when I get back, I have a shower, turn on the music, and rest on the sofa. I'm often a bit sleepy after my run. I can imagine. Thanks for your time.、Uh, excuse me, madam. We're doing a survey. What's it about? Are you a morning person? Oh, it depends on the season. In the winter, I often go back to sleep, but in the summer, I feel more energetic and get up earlier. And what's the first thing you do after you wake up? I do the same thing every day. I've got an online shop, so I find out how many things were ordered during the night. That sounds interesting. Thank you very much for talking to us. Now,、uh, hello, sir. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Is it a survey? Okay, are you a morning person, sir? I am definitely not an early bird. If I didn't have an alarm clock, I wouldn't wake up. Really? And what's the first thing you do after you wake up? I have a bowl of cereal. Doesn't everybody do that in the morning? File eleven. Listening two. One. How are things with your new girlfriend, Robert? Oh, we aren't getting on very well. I just think we've got nothing in common. What do you mean? Well, she plays basketball four nights a week. That's her social life. And you like going for wild nights out. 
If I were you, I'd look for someone else. Two. Is anyone sitting here? No, please sit down. I love watching the children play volleyball. So do I. I'm a bit late today, though. The game's going to be over soon. Yes, and it's match point. Come on, the Blues! Three. Fran, I wanted to let you know I'm not going out tonight with the class. Neither am I. I'm looking after my neighbour's dogs. What are you doing? I'm going to get up early tomorrow morning and go cycling. That sounds energetic. I'll see you for lunch then. Four. So, what do you do, Vicky? I'm a security guard. What a coincidence. So am I. Isn't that a difficult job for a woman? Not really. I do martial arts. That helps. So, if someone insults you, you can throw them over your shoulder? Not usually. I try not to, anyway. Five. Hi, Paula. Great party. Hi, Andy. I saw you earlier, but you didn't wave. That's because it wasn't me. <laughs> I've just arrived. It was probably my twin brother, Stuart. Oh, I didn't know you had a twin. You look exactly the same. I know. Everyone says that. <laughs> File 12. Listening 1. I can't believe some of the stories you read on the internet. What do you mean? Well, I read a story last night about a German postman who got married to his cat. You're joking. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The postman bought the cat in 2000. He said that the cat had been his best friend since then. He wanted to marry the cat because the cat had become ill and was going to die. Officials had told the postman that it wasn't possible for him to marry a cat, so the postman paid an actress to marry them. That's a strange story, Martha. Well, it's true. And there's another one about an English postman. He was bitten by a snake when he was taking the letters out of a postbox. Oh, that's awful. The snake had decided to sleep in the post box. The postman opened the box and the snake bit the postman's hand. He sucked the poison out and then he continued working. What happened to the snake? Oh, I don't know. Have you read any other strange stories about postmen? No, but I read a horrible story about snakes. 400 snakes were found in a police station in Sierra Leone. What were the snakes doing in the police station? The snakes had made their home there. The police and soldiers had to use water to flood them out. And many of the snakes were killed. Oh, that's frightening. <laughs> OK, Martha, that's enough scary stories for one night. Let's watch something funny on the TV. <laughs> All right. <laughs> File 12. Listening to... 1. Have you seen the photo of the little girl on the front page of the newspaper? It's amazing. Her face says so much. Let me see. Oh, yes, it's really emotional. Who said, a picture is worth a thousand words? I don't know. Maybe Napoleon. Why? Well, it's so true, looking at that picture. Two. Which band do you think has made the most money? Uh, it must be the Beatles. Yes, I think you're right. And which Beatles song is the most popular? Oh, I read somewhere that it's Hey Jude. Oh, really? That's my favourite one too. Three. Ivy, who discovered that the world was round, not flat? I think it was the Greeks, starting with Pythagoras. I thought it was Ferdinand Magellan. Well, I suppose Magellan was the first person to test the idea. 
He sailed round the world and didn't fall off. Four. Dora, who painted that picture on your wall? I've seen it everywhere, but I can't remember the artist's name. It's The Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Of course it's van Gogh. Now I remember. So which painter cut part of his ear off then? That was van Gogh too. Five. Who directed the film One Day? It was Lona Scherfig. Have you heard of her? She's from Denmark, I think. The film is actually adapted from a novel. Oh, I didn't know that. So, who wrote the novel then? David Nichols. It was a bestseller. Progress test. Files 1 to 6. Listening 1. OK, here's my family. I love this photo. I took it last summer. Oh, when was it? July, I think. Um, oh, of course. July the 16th, Mum's birthday. We had a picnic on the beach and five of us came. Mum, Dad, my two older brothers, Jamie and Alex, and me. We were all there except my sister, Lisa. She's the oldest and I'm the youngest. She and her boyfriend, Tom, were away on holiday. And of course, I'm not in the picture because I was taking it. <laughs> anyway, that's my mum with the grey hair. It was her 60th birthday that we were celebrating. She's lovely, really generous and kind. She's met a lot of my friends and they always really like her. That's my dad on her left with the dark hair. Next to him is my brother, Jamie. He's the one with short blonde hair. He's a lawyer and we don't see him that often because he's very busy. He's really clever, but he's quite shy and quiet. I don't think you've met him. Then there's my other brother, Alex, the one with dark hair on the left. He always wears black. I think he's probably the one I feel closest to. He's a teacher, and I think he was smiling so much in this photo because it was the first day of his school holiday. <laughs> Progress test. Files 1 to 6. Listening 2. 1. Oh, no. Did you hear that? It's delayed by three hours. That's ages. Oh. Do you want to go back to the town centre and do a bit of sightseeing? It's not far. No, we can't do that. We've already checked in our bags. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Let's go to the departure lounge. We can get something to eat and you can go to the shops too. Two. Excuse me. This chicken is cold. Oh dear, it is, isn't it? I'm... And I didn't want a salad. I ordered chips. I'm terribly sorry, sir. I'll take it back to the kitchen immediately. Three. This sweater's a medium. It doesn't fit. Oh, what size were you looking for? <sighs> Have you got it in a large? This one's a bit too small for me. I'll just check, madam. Four. Oh, hi, Kim. I thought you were on holiday. No, that was last week. It went so fast. I know what you mean. So, are you busy now you're back here? Yeah, I've got two big meetings and I'm seeing the boss tomorrow. Yes, it's always worse after a holiday, isn't it? Five. That's Molly, over there. See her? She's dancing with Sam. I think he invited her tonight, but they're just good friends. Oh, she looks nice. What's she like? She's quite shy, but she's really friendly when you get to know her. I'll introduce you if you like.
Progress test file 7 to 12. Listening 1. Do you get bored working at home all day on the computer? Well, yes, to be honest. I sometimes used to. But that's why, a couple of years ago, I started teaching people to swim part-time. It gets me out of the house and in contact with other people. It sounds like fun. How much time do you spend teaching then? I only have three classes. They're all on Monday afternoons. I spend the rest of the working week doing my desk job. I've got one class for older people, the over 60s, and two classes of kids. Can they already swim? My adults class and one of the children's lessons are for beginners. Those kids are only four or five, and the class is really big, so it's hard work. And the other class is more advanced. Although they're only 11 or 12 years old, they're excellent swimmers already, and we're training them to win competitions. So, a real variety then. Do you have a favourite class? I mean, if you could only teach one, which would you choose? Oh, that's easy. I choose the adult beginners. Why is that then? I suppose it's what swimming means to them. For one reason or another, they haven't learnt how to do it before retirement age. Many of them have had bad experiences at some point. You know, maybe they were thrown into deep water when they were young or something. And now most of them are terrified. Deciding to learn to swim is a big thing for them. And helping them to stop being afraid is a great feeling. We get on very well, and I really look forward to those lessons. It sounds like a wonderful job. Why don't you do it all the time? I can't afford it. The job isn't paid very well. It's very tiring, too. If I did it all the time, I'd be exhausted. Oh, that's a shame. Progress test, file 7 to 12. Listening, 2. 1. You don't look very well at all. What's the matter? I have a terrible headache and a sore throat. Oh dear. Let's have a look. How long have you felt ill? Nearly a week now. I've got no energy at all. Hmm. And you have a temperature too. I think you have flu. Two. Excuse me. Are you local? Actually, I'm not, but I work around here, so I know the area pretty well. Great. Uh, can you tell me how to get to the Modern Art Museum? Oh, that's easy. You can take the number 17 bus. See the stop over there? Ah, uh, yes. Great. Thanks. And uh, how many stops is it? Um, it's not far. In Fenchurch Street. I think that's five stops. Ask the driver to be sure. Three. Hello. Hello. This is Anthony Rogers. Can I speak to Sophia Wyatt, please? I'm sorry. Mrs Wyatt's not in the office this afternoon. Oh. Can I leave a message, please? Yes, of course. Can you tell her I called and that I'll call back tomorrow? Yes, certainly. Four. Have you got anything for a bad stomach? Yes. These work very well, but they're only for adults. They're four ninety nine. That's fine. It's for me. How often should I take them? Three times a day with water. If you don't feel better in three days, you should see your doctor. Five. I've just heard something really great. Oh, that sounds interesting. What's up? Well, you know my sister Mary was feeling a bit sick last time we saw her. Mm -hmm. Apparently, she's going to have a baby. <laughs> Mum will be so pleased. <gasps> really? That's fantastic. When? End of course test. Listening one. You were thinking about joining a book group last time I saw you. Did you contact them? Yes, I did. But in the end, I couldn't go. They meet on Tuesdays, and I'll be busy then. Oh, why? 
I'm starting a new course on Tuesday nights. Photography. I'm going to study it at the local college. I didn't know you liked photography. Have you even got a camera? I thought you just took pictures with your mobile phone. Well, I used to. <laughs> But I got a new camera for my birthday last week. Ah. And I really want to learn how to use it better. The course is for six months and it covers the history of photography, taking pictures, and editing them too. You know, on your computer. Sounds interesting. So, where's this college? I might look at their courses too. It's on Rowland Road. In fact, they have an open evening this Friday. You can find out more about all the courses they run. Thanks, Tom. So, where's Rowland Road then? Oh, that's easy. It's only about five minutes' walk from here. You know the sports centre?、Mm. It's the next turning on the left after that. Oh, I think I know the place. Isn't there a cinema down there somewhere? Yes, Film World. The college is opposite that. Great. I'll go and have a look. What sort of thing do you think you'd like to try? Well, I gave up French very early in school, and I think I'd like to go back to learning it again. I'll wait and see when it's on. Well, if you find one on a Tuesday, I can give you a lift. Remember, that's the night of my photography course. Ah, great idea. I'll just look for Tuesdays then. Thanks, Tom. End of course test. Listening to one. Look at this hotel on the website. The rooms are really luxurious. Yes, well, for five stars, you'd expect something a bit special. Oh, yes, it is fantastic, isn't it? Maybe we could try it for a weekend break next summer. Hmm. If we could afford to stay there, it would be great. But it's not really an option. Two. What a terrible place! I'm not going there again. Oh, you said the rooms were comfortable and the food was delicious. Maybe, but everyone I talked to was so unhelpful. I didn't enjoy my stay at all. Oh dear, that's a shame. Three. We're going to Buenos Aires in the autumn. Really? Lucky you. Have you booked a place to stay yet? I'm waiting to ask Miguel. Actually, he told me he'd been to a couple of really nice hotels and could give me a few suggestions. He said he'd find their names and contact details. Oh, that's helpful. Four. How was your break last weekend? The weather was beautiful, and our hotel was friendly, and in a great location. But you don't sound that happy. What was wrong? The city itself, I'm afraid. Everywhere we went was so crowded that it was hard to see anything, and you had to queue for hours to get into the museums.、Oh. It just wasn't relaxing at all. It's a lovely place, but tourism has ruined it. I think. Oh dear. Five. How was your holiday? Did you have fun? Yes, the people were lovely. Our accommodation was a bit basic, but I didn't mind that. There's only one thing I'd change. Oh, what's that? There was too much industry right near the centre of the town. The whole place was very polluted. After a week there, I just wanted to get out into the countryside and breathe some fresh air.